The lake behind me has a ton of fish rising. However, this is a very tricky lake to be able to fly fish because there's not a lot of room to cast. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can get a fly into the middle of the lake with just a spinning rod. Stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy. Now thankfully this rig is super easy to tie, so we're gonna go over it right here. All right, now some of you can actually skip this step if your whole entire spool is just fluorocarbon or monofilament line. However, mine is braid, so I have to tie a leader on because you don't want that braid uh, basically to your float. You wanna have some, some mono or fluoro on each side of it. M ideally mono because mono floats and that's what we want this fly to be doing is floating on top. So in this case, I got some monofilament leader here. We just tied it onto our braid, and I have about five feet of that going down, and we're ready to tie the rig. But like I said, if you have just mono or floral already on your setup, you don't have to worry about this step. Now, a lot of people call this the float and fly rig. A lot of people call this the, you know, bubble float rig. Uh, there's a bunch of different names for it, but these are the main two floats that you want to be using for this rig. There is a couple other ones you can choose from, but these are the two that I think are the best. Now, this one is nice because it is an adjustable float. So basically what it is, is there is a little uh, elastic band in there. And when you put this through your line, you can actually twist this bubble up and it twists that line and it keeps your, your float on there. And then basically, if you want to adjust it, say you want to go from a two foot leader from your float, you know, from your bobber to your fly, you want to switch from a two foot to a five foot, you just undo those twistings, move it up and retwist it on and you're good to go. What's also really cool about this one is you can actually open this up and you can fill this with water. And when you filled it up with water, obviously it makes it extremely heavy. This rig consists of just a fly on the end of your line. So you're not gonna get any type of distance casting that fly on a spinning rod. That's the point of fly fishing is you have your heavy fly line which throws your fly out. So this, in this case, right, this is our weight, this is our lure, you know, our, our, our spinner, right, that we would be using to throw that weight out. But the fly is obviously what the fish is gonna get. This one's really cool. This is actually my favorite, and this one is a fixed float, which is one con. However, I really like this style, you don't really have to change, especially if you're using a dry fly on top, you're not really having to change your leader when you're using float and flies a lot, especially in these high alpine lakes. So for me, this one basically has a tie point at the top and a tie-in point at the bottom. This one is a little bit lighter than this guy right here, but I like the way this one casts. Uh, I also really like the clear. They have these in clear as well, um, but that one right there, I just really like that one. But either way, I've caught loads of fish with both of these two. Now this one's really simple because you just put your line through, you twist it, boom, that's not going anywhere. You tie on your fly and you're fishing. That one is like, I mean, it literally would take less than a minute to get this rig done. Um, but we're gonna do this guy right here as well so I can show you how to do both of these. This one, you're gonna tie your line on the top here. So basically there's just one hole at the top. You're gonna tie, I like an improved clinch knot on these guys. Okay, got that. We're gonna snip off our tag end here. Now we're gonna use uh, our basically our line from the bobber to the fly. Now I like about a three to four foot leader. I think if the fish are, are really, really picky, then you can go longer, five, six, seven. But at that point, it becomes really hard to cast. Uh, the shorter the leader, the far, you know farther you can bomb it behind you without having to worry about snacks. So for me, we've got some six pound test here. This is a high alpine lake and these fish can be really, really stubborn in high alpine lakes. It can be really line shy sometimes. Um, other times they are not line shy at all and they are the easiest things in the world to catch. But this lake, the fish tend to be a little bit line shy at, at certain times. So we're going to take about four feet of that leader right there. Like I said, you can go longer or shorter depending on uh, what you want to do on that. I like about four feet. We're going to tie that line on the bottom here. Okay, we got our knot tied. So all we got, we got our float, and then we've got our leader, and we're ready to put on our fly. So in terms of flies, obviously you can get creative. This also depends on what fish you're targeting. Today we're targeting trout, so we're gonna be using your standard trout flies, uh, especially it's also um, high alpine lakes, so we're gonna be using big terrestrials uh, like crickets and grasshoppers work really, really well for this type of stuff. 
but you can get really creative on this. I know a lot of bass fishermen use float and fly rigs as well. You could put like a little jig head on the bottom uh, with a little fly, that works really well. You can also, in terms of the fly fishing world, especially for trout, you can throw nymphs underneath. It doesn't have to be on the top of the surface, right? Like you can come in with, you know, like coronamid patterns like this guy tied that bad boy up what a sexy little fly if you if you were to put this little guy on it's actually going to sink so basically you would be watching that little clear bubble float you would be basically watching that like a bobber if that goes down a fish has it instead of like what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be throwing a dry fly on and we're actually going to watch the fish come up and hit the dry fly and then set the hook another thing you can do is put on little streamers this right here you can buy at a lot of different fly shops this is called a balanced leech and it's very similar like a wooly bugger for those of you that know that uh, it's kind of it's serving the same purpose here these guys are really awesome to put underneath a float those get a lot of big fish as well I mean, you can really get creative and put on whatever fly you want. Today, we're gonna go with my favorites of all time. A lot of the fish behind me are jumping. They seem really aggressive today, so I don't think it's gonna matter like what type of fly. I don't have to go real scientific here and match the hatch with something really, really small. We're gonna be using a big rubber leg stimulator. This one's actually missing a couple legs on it because I have been crushing fish with this pattern the last couple weeks. So we're gonna tie that on at the end here, okay? and we're done, that's it, that's the rig. We literally have the clear float, some leader, and your fly. Now, all you gotta do is cast it out and fish, which we'll talk about a little bit here. Oh my gosh, we got fish rising everywhere in front of me. Now, short casts with a fly rod aren't as, aren't as hard, but if you were to want to get that thing out more than 10 or 15 yards, you would have to have a decent back cast just to get it out. With a spinning rod, you don't even have to do that, right? So all I gotta do is just take this here, and I can, I mean, this thing is heavy enough that I can actually just pitch it out there, just like that. So I can actually see my fly on the top of the water there, and, oh, and we're on, oh! Just like that, we're on. And I, I'm just gonna leave it there because um, I'll probably get another one here. But that's the advantage of having this versus the fly rod. Obviously, I love the fly rod. I think it's more fun to fight the fish. And I do think there are advantages of a fly rod, you know, things that you can't do with a spinning setup. But in this case, I think the spinning rod wins. All right. One thing you can do after you bring it back up is sometimes your fly is gonna get a little wet and it's going to sink, uh, you know, and it's not gonna stay up. We want that fly on the top. So if you have some um, fly floatant, you can put a little floatant on there and it helps keep it on the top of the water. You can also just go and that kind of, you know, air dries it right there. So we're gonna do another flip out a little bit farther here. And actually I'm just gonna cast this one to show you guys just how far you can bomb these things out. Look at that. That thing's way out there. Oh, and we just lost one already. Wow. And this method can be used with any type of fish, right? It doesn't have to be just alpine lake trout fishing. I mean, you can use this with bluegill at your local pond. You know, you can throw a little jig underneath it and use it for bass or whatever. You know, obviously this works really good for crappie and certain things too. Um, I just think in general, this is usually used as a substitute for fly fishing. And so that's why it happens to be the best for trout. <sighs> there we are. Oh, cool. What is it? Looks like a cutthroat. Looks like an absolutely beautiful cutthroat trout here. Oh my goodness. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Oh my gosh. The colors on this thing are so pretty. I can't wait to show you guys this. Oh my goodness, he is so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful fish. We're gonna wet our hands before touching them here. Oh, folks, look at that cutthroat. What a beautiful fish. He's got that fly in the corner of the mouth there. Oh my goodness. All right, we got that fly out. Oh, and there he goes. Quick release. Woo.
Oh, that was awesome. Wow, that fish crushed it. Ooh, that's a better fish too. <laughs> oh yeah, good fish. Good fish. Sweet. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Just measured him out. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Measured him out at 13 inches. Pretty. Woo. There it goes. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, you're also going to love the two tutorials up here. Hopefully you guys got something out of today's video. Let me know what you want to see me do next, and we'll see you guys next time on Humbug Videos.